Two Jamaican referees have been told to pack their bags, but not in the way you might be thinking. Paris bound are Damien Parchmont and Odette Hamilton, who have been selected by FIFA to officiate at this summer's Olympic Games. Well, thanks so much for staying with us on this Friday edition of the Sports Max Zone. And we kick off the show by talking Olympic football. As mentioned previously, big news coming from the offices of FIFA that Caribbean representation will be a part of Olympic football this summer in the French capital. Hamilton has been slated by FIFA to serve as one of the six support referees at the Games, while Parchmont will serve as one of 20 video match officials, having also served in that role during the recent CONCACAF Nations League final between the United States and Mexico. So we have the pleasure now of speaking to one of the referees set to take that flight to Paris. He's Damien Parchment joining us via Zoom. Good afternoon, congratulations. So, so proud of you and happy that you can join us this afternoon on the Sportsmax Zone. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate the commendations. Um, I am actually doing okay, giving God thanks. Uh, you know, this is a big opportunity for for myself and also for the Caribbean in general, um, Jamaica and a whole. Yeah, definitely, Danion. So are you ready? Because, I mean, this is such a big deal to officiate at the Olympic Games. Can you start a bit by telling me, you know, just the work that you would have put in to finally be reaping these rewards? Because Caribbean representation at an Olympic Games has to be a big, big deal. We have so many referees all around the Caribbean, you know, doing their thing. But for you to get this opportunity, talk to me about the work and now that you're finally able to reap that reward. Um, I started out my, my international FIFA free career back in 2017, um, where I have refereed numerous games at the under 17 level, the under 20 level, at the CONCACAF um, Scotia Bank Champions League, um, the Nations League, um, a lot of international friends, the Olympic qualifiers, and etc. So um, the journey has been a, a very, a very long one. Um, I also started my VAR um, certification all the way back in 2019 when COVID came about and, and disrupt um, the whole um, certification process. But um, thank God um, we were able to move out of the COVID era and the opportunity was still there for me to still excel in whether I am on the pitch or I'm, I'm in the VR room. You say VAR and my antenna went up. I, I'm sure my hair has probably spiked up already. Um, VAR, a topic that has been a discussion on this show ever since. Being a, a referee, Danian, must have so many difficult times because that's a job I don't think I would ever want. The referee can never do right sometimes to the public who, you know, is watching football. Have you ever had an experience like a challenging one where you made a decision and nobody agreed with you? Or, you know, some story that you could share with us about how being a referee is not the easiest job. Um, as you all know, you have um, yourself and Lance who's, who's in the studio with you. We just <laughs> Number of, a number of games with me um, in our local Premier League and also at the at the CONCACAF level. Yeah. And you know, going into an Arnett Garden or going to a Waterhouse or Tivoli Garden to officiate a game, and when the fans turn out to watch your team play, it is not always a, 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 a easy task, you know, because you cannot please these fans. And we have to do our job as a referee. So whether the fans like what we are doing, are not we still have to ref the game to the best of our abilities and make the best decision for the game so um i i remember maybe two or three years ago i was in audit garden and there was this particular um supporter he was a rasta man and trust me he was saying some very choice choice words and um i my decision were correct even though they were they were not approved by by the spectators, yeah. but they were 
did correct. Um, I actually had to stop the game because that particular person was trying to bring the game into disrepute. So I, I had to get the police officer who was in charge of the game and, and ask him to remove this person from the game, from the from the venue, sorry, not the game. So and and from then it set a trend, a positive trend for our local referee because we have such powers and duties to can remove anyone from within the surrounding area that we think is a threat or is disrupting the game of football. Yeah, you know, I feel it for you because sometimes I think people forget that the ref is there to, of course, ensure the game goes fairly. Sometimes, Lance, they see the ref as the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daniel knows exactly what he's talking about because he experiences it um, all the time. But you know what? I want to test you on this, um, Daniel, because your role in Paris will be as a VAR referee. Now, Sorry. we don't practice VAR in the Caribbean, so you don't get a lot of practice with that aspect of your officiating domestically. I know you've been oh. on some courses, CONCACAF courses in the USA and so on. Can you talk to us about, first of all, the preparatory courses that you did and what it entailed becoming a VAR expert? Okay, so... Since the start of, of this year, we had a, a course in Toluca, Mexico, where all the elite referees within CONCACAF and VR, we were hosted by the Mexican Federation in Toluca. The facility is an awesome facility, um, Lance. Um, it's one of a kind. I have never seen such facility. I have traveled a lot, and it's the best facility I have seen as a, as a match official. So during that time, um, for the five days that we were in Toluca, um, we were we were brought through a series of tests um using the simulator um with 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 um with our VR specialist instructors from within Kankakaf and also you know um the 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 um the persons who are who are who are in charge of the the whole um to, um these persons are called the the moderator right so they take charge of whatever angles we ask them for within the game to see if the decision on the field is correct or not. You know, because our duty as a video match official is to is to give the referee a second opportunity if he he or she has missed something on the field of play and have them come to the monitor to look at it to make the best decision for the game. So leading up as I said, leading up to to this um appointment, um we started there in, in Taluka. Um and then I was selected shortly to officiate in the Women's Gold Cup where I did, I think, at least six games as a, as a VAR. Um, it went very, very smoothly. Um, not, it's not only the referee alone have difficult times on the pitch, but as a VAR who is sitting with 18 or 17 cameras in front of you, you now have to, to choose the best angle to give to the referee to get a second opportunity to make the best decision for the game. So, you know, we cannot, if the referee make a mistake on the field, our duty as a video match official is not to make the same mistake that the referee would have made. Yeah, but Daniel, you know, I'm listening to you carefully and I'm assessing the different roles that you have. And I'm thinking that if I was a referee, I think I'd probably prefer being in the VAR seat than being on, on the field because it, it looks easier to me because you're seeing everything. You have different cameras, different angles, and it does is does it is more comfortable because you're not in the the hot sun or, oh. or, or <laughs> so I, I'm thinking I'm thinking that var that var role there sounds sounds um preferred to me. I'm not sure what, what your response is, yes. Lance, to be honest, the, if we have an excellent referee on the pitch they will make our job easier as a video match official. Because if they make the correct and the best decision for us, all we have to do is to confirm the decision that they would have made and check complete when they show a yellow card or we check complete the goal or a red card that was that was given. So it is not definitely easy, Lance. Trust me, whenever you are in the seat and when the moment arrives for you to, for example, make an on-field review if the referee have made a mistake and we want to have the referee to come and take a look. We have to put ourselves into the shoes of the referee and saying, is this the best decision for the game, right? So 
whenever you are in the in the hot seat, it is not an easy task. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be provocative because you just said if you have an excellent referee, um, leads me to fear that sometimes you don't have excellent referees. Sometimes we know we have refer or referee or the concentration level will go lance. Um, so we are we are human beings and we are prone to make little mistakes. So as a match official, we want to limit the amount of mistake that is made on the field of play. So our duty as a referee is to limit the amount of mistake. And then now with where the VAR comes in is that if the referee make an error that the whole world is seeing that is obviously wrong, we want to give that referee a second opportunity to make it right by come to the monitor and, and, and make the best decision for, for the game. Yeah, a quick comment on Odette Hamilton, Damian, because you have sure. been Jamaica's number one referee for several years now. I'd say about five or six years. You have, um, based on your performance, shown yourself as number one. But Odette is a pretty solid referee as well. I know there are a lot of times when... Um, you had overseas assignments and, you know, Odette would get some big games. I remember him, her doing um, a, a Premier League final between Waterhouse and Portmore. I think that was 2019. You were traveling at the time. So we know I that Odette, Odette is pretty solid with her performances as well. Any, any comments about her getting the opportunity like you to be in Paris for the Olympics? Um, Odette, has, Odette has grown tremendously and she, she proved that during the last woman women's gold cup where she officiated a, a quarter final game and she had an excellent game so because of that excellent game she was selected along with another referee from from Honduras Melissa Borjas who actually did the final so the, both of them were in contention to see who will referee the, 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 the final of the women's gold cup and Melissa had had the edge so she were she was given she was given the opportunity but um as I said Odette is she re, she's really excel, excelling in, into uh, a top class referee and we just hope that she will continue to grow and you know she will soak up as much as as possible as if she she's a sponge you know so we're, we're looking forward to Odette doing great things in the future to come I'm so proud of her because I I always say you know as a woman and I mean I could only speak for us uh, just seeing her do that and of course representing at the highest level, it must be a difficult task for her as well. And I'm hoping that in the future uh, we could get to chat with her because I'm sure you had your stories that you just shared with us about, you know, the, the issues you would have. I'm sure she has her, hers as well. And it might be, well, to me, a bit difficult because trying to officiate a men's game must be rough. And then the first thing, and I, I can speak from personal experiences, people say is, well, you know, maybe she just didn't belong. She's a woman, and that could be rough as well. Um, we have to know, face the reality, and, and and accept that it is not only a men's game. Correct. Soccer, also a woman, because we are now seeing women officiating in men, in the men's World Cup and in in the men's club World Cup. Right. For example, we have Tori who officiated the final of the of the of the. Women's World Cup, and she was also um, selected to officiate in the in the um, the Club World Cup that just ended yeah. some months ago. So, so she she is she is doing a great job. So we have to understand that women's women belong to to the main games as well, and and the players have to accept that. And as you said, it's a difficult task for for the female. I know that. Or it would have had some challenges yeah. or some challenging game in the past in our, in our Premier League. But she's growing and the players are, are, are accepting her decision and they're also showing her a lot of respect as well. Yeah, and I don't want to make it about women at all because I know you all have the same issues equally. Really, really proud of you, Danion, and of course, Odette. We're supposed to be joined by Odette soon. I know she's, she's a bit under the weather, so I'm looking forward to that. And I'm wishing you all the best when you head across to Paris. We'll be covering the Olympic Games, so I'll get an opportunity to just follow a bit closely. Of course, and just just before um, I I exit the the call, um, we should know that um, Concacaf and FIFA is no no longer focusing on gender. It doesn't Good. really matter. If you Good. are a male or female. So as who whosoever you are, you are belong you belong to the game. So we have to accept that, and I that is where it lands. I love that. That's a great way to wrap this discussion. Good luck. Make sure and pack your clothes for Paris, and we'll talk again soon.
I appreciate that very much. All right, take care, Danian. All right, Danian Parchment over there. You know, we're getting ready for the Olympics, and, you know, all discussions like this, of course, really, really set the tone. Proud of our Caribbean referees. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we have so much more to discuss.